Hey everybody, thanks for clicking. You see the title, and uh, yeah, another new project. Let's talk about it. So this bike is actually a long time project of mine. Uh, this is another customer build and uh, we got started on it a, f a few years ago at this point and had to kind of uh, had to kind of put it on the back burner for a while but now we're gonna go ahead and get back on this thing the uh, the bike itself is an 83 GL 650 so imagine this thing actually it was an interstate model too so it had the the full fairing up front it had the full fairing in the back it had hard bags and stuff I'll put, put up a photo now of the of the before but uh, we've not I've knocked something like 150 pounds off this bike so I've been wanting to actually start and do a uh, do a GL series bike you know they have a mono shock from the factory this one's off like a Kawasaki or something like that we're not going to use it so it's not the correct you know spring rate or anything like that I have a different different shock in mind so yeah, I wanted to start out with a GL650 specifically versus a 500 because you know we have a dual disc front end, obviously larger engine, so more power. They make like something like 15 horse more than like a 500 series out of the box. They're already mono shocked and they have a, they have a different wheel, so just they're they're just a little different across the board. And uh, I, I was just really excited about this one, so. I have done a bunch of work to this already. I'm about uh, what I would consider about 70% of the way through the fab work on it. Now, the the biggest change is the subframe. Now, it is does have a little, you know, corrosion on it right now. Just you know, it has been sitting idle for a couple of years. But uh, did a hoop and then I kind of tapered it inward in the front here, and then you know, cut the bars off the bottom here, and then put another support bar up top. So everything is actually designed to line up with the line of this tank right here. And that line follows the line of the cylinder head. So if you look at it from the side, everything should flow. Now I haven't seen one done like that, so that's why I wanted to do this one. And uh, if you look at it from the top, everything kind of V's in and then V's back out. So it has a really cool shape to it. And then another line I did on this uh, was the exhaust, picking up the angle of the muffler with the subframe. So everything has some kind of line to it. There's thought into everything. Now, the exhaust itself, stock headers, and then right about here, you can see I've welded on a, uh, a series of pipes. So I have a merge and then a crossover coming from the other side. So merge kicks up. I think it's a one point, like one and five eighths inch uh, collector here, and then it's into a cone engineering muffler. So this thing's gonna sound good. I've used that muffler a bunch. Beyond that, let's see. So we've got some Renthal uh, Superbike handlebars, and then a Trailtech Vapor digital dash setup. So this is gonna have coolant temperature, uh, tax, speedo, signals, and stuff like that, or at least I can put the provisions for the signals in there. That's a really cost-effective gauge setup, and yeah, used it before. So uh, we have the twin headlight set up on here. I'm going to build a plate to kind of cover that, and uh, we'll make it look cool. But yeah, today's mission is for me to kind of go through the bike, figure out you know kind of where I need to continue from here, and uh, just get back with the customer, and we'll we'll get going on this thing again. So I think. In the end, it's probably going to have like a, a set of um, more dual sport tires, probably like a 70-30 or an 80-20 type tire. So it'll have a little bit of tread on there. Um, and then the seat, the seat, I have the seat pan actually partially made. It's been sitting up here forever, but uh, the seat itself is going to have like more of like a Moto X type look to it. I want to try to use uh, maybe some vinyl that you might see on like a motocross bike, which would look really cool. but. Anyway, this one's going to be, uh, you know, it's not going to be like the current CX build. It's going to be more of a budget build. So we're going to do a lot of stuff in here that's uh, that you might see, you know, like we're going to do a lot of stuff in here you might see like on Wanda or uh, 
or other, you know, like budget bikes. So this is going to be, you know, a lot of like a lot of paint and, you know, wire wheel, like just cleaning it up. But, you know, we're not going to go crazy and do like extravagant paint work or powder coating or anything like that. We're going to keep it fun, keep it, you know, keep it reasonably affordable. So um, I know this thing has good bones. I bought this bike in stock form, uh, got it running, rode it around a little bit, ran great. since then it's just been sitting in in a warehouse uh ever since i took it apart but um yeah it had high hopes for this one it should be fun i know like the 650 engines they just you know that 15 horse makes a big difference it makes it just you know brings it right up to you know what you'd expect a modern bike to do so capability wise it's really good so i'm excited about this one and i hope you guys are too so I'm going to go, like I said, comb over this thing and figure out what it needs next. All right, it's a little later in the day now. I know I changed clothes, but anyway, I've been going through the uh, parts stash here, and I went ahead and I just I got the tank off the bike, and then I've been laying out all the parts that I have for it, which is all of them. It was a running complete bike when I got it. So what the game plan for this thing is going to be is... Um, instead of doing like you know like the full-blown wiring harness build i'm probably going to just slim down the factory one and i'll definitely show you guys how to do that because i know there's a lot of people that are interested in in such things um so we'll slim down the uh it, slim down the full harness it's still going to have turn signals on it we have bar end turn signals and then you know high low beam and you know it's got to have a horn and stuff like that so it'll just be you know what it has to be just the simple stuff I am planning on using just the uh, the uh, stock TI ignition, so we'll have the uh, transistors there, and then stock GL650 linkage. Yeah, I did. Already, this is you know this is something I did in the past. I did already uh, start roughing out a seat pan. Now, if you look, um, I'll link it right now. But the uh, CX build I'm doing currently, I show you how to build uh, how I build my seat pans. I use like a 14 gauge piece of steel and then I uh, build off of that and so this one's gonna be you know have this shape and then it's probably from the side gonna taper up a little bit and then I want to have it kind of like crowned in the middle almost it'll be it'll be pretty cool hopefully kind of like a motocross bike or something as I've mentioned anyway as far as uh, other parts concerned besides the wiring harness um, I do have the stock controls we're gonna use I know everything looks grimy and stuff right now but it's just dirty. It will clean up, and then what doesn't clean up, we will revive and, and you know, rejuvenate. So, yeah, a lot of work ahead, but this is not going to be a, a real crazy bike, so I'm pretty excited to do it. Um, one thing I haven't shown you, I did, I do have an idea for my battery tray. Let me see if I can get this in the focus here. So, right here is just a... a uh, block of wood. I built a couple of these. So this is the same size as an anti-gravity eight, you know, AG801 anti-gravity battery. And this is what I would use on this bike. So I have a couple dummy blocks and I, I start mocking them up. So I am going to end up building the battery tray to fit down here. And that'll be nice and hidden. Probably mount the solenoid. Probably up top somewhere, but yeah, that'll at least that at least get the battery down low. It is going to be a tight, a tight squeeze to fit, you know, to fit stuff in here. What I'm probably going to end up doing is uh, having a flat panel here, having all the electronics stuffed inside this gap here, and then you'll just access those by popping the seat off. And I think that's going to be the uh, most straightforward way for me to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to make a parts list. Get some stuff ordered. All right, guys, I appreciate you sticking with it this long. I know I've been rambling a little bit, so I'm going to wrap it up here. I've already been doing a lot of work to this bike, so you're going to see that in upcoming videos. There's going to be a lot of tips and tricks and, and cool things we're doing to this thing without spending a whole ton of cash. So anyway, uh, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. 
And then if you want to know or want to get more information on, say, this project or any project that I've done in the past, I do ask uh, or suggest that you go to my Facebook page. I have a, a photo album for every bike I've done start to finish. So that's a great wealth of information of all the little modifications I've done that you can get an idea of how I did it or at least get uh, you know more solid photos of it. So head over there if you wish. And uh, if you want to go a step further, head to my website and grab a hat or a hoodie or, or t-shirt or whatnot. Any order is greatly appreciated. But uh, we're going to be jamming away on this thing. It's going to be a lot of fun, so don't miss out. And uh, I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.